From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Thursday, January 19th, 2023. Vendors bypassing security patches. The security firm Sansec warns that some e-commerce vendors began bypassing security patches for mail templates in Adobe Commerce and Magento. These patches date back to February, fixing an actively exploited bug with improper input validation in the checkout process that opened the door to arbitrary code execution. Part of the patch saw Adobe remove the smart mail templates and introducing a mail template variable resolver to prevent injection attacks. That last part seems to be causing an issue with some vendors seeking to reintroduce the functionality of the old template resolver into production Magento stores, often by copying old code. Sansac warns this effectively reintroduces the security flaw. ChatGPT creates polymorphic malware. The security implications of generative AI continue to develop. We've already covered ChatGPT used to outline a simple buffer overflow vulnerability and the illicit online forums attempting to use it for malware generation. Now researchers at CyberArk created a new strand of polymorphic malware using the tool. The team successfully got around OpenAI's content filters by creating malware simply by repeating requests to create it with more specific constraints. The team also noted that the ChatGPT API doesn't seem to offer any content filtering at all. Once it created the malware code, ChatGPT created multiple variations. The researchers said it could mutate the output on a whim, making it unique every time. Bitwarden acquires passwordless dev. This marks the first acquisition for the open source password management platform, obtaining the Swedish startup Passwordless Dev. The company specializes in tools for developers to integrate passwordless authentication. Bitwarden supports some passwordless authentication already, including biometrics and the use of FIDO security keys. With the acquisition announcement, Bitwarden launched a new beta service to allow third-party developers to embed biometric sign-in tech into apps. No word on how much the deal costs, but Bitwarden recently raised its first funding round in September, securing $100 million, so it could probably afford it. Fed sees BitsLotto crypto exchange. The U.S. Department of Justice announced an arrest of the founder of the exchange, Anatoly Leg Kodimov, charging him with money laundering. The DOJ arrested the Russian national in Miami and arraigned him in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida. As part of an operation in coordination with Interpol, French authorities took down the Bitsalato infrastructure. The DOJ said a lack of know-your-customer controls made the exchange a haven for illegal funds. Chainalysis estimates the exchange received over $2 billion worth of cryptocurrency from 2019 to 2021, of which 48% represented illicit or risky transactions. The dark web Hydra market carried out the most transactions on the platform. And now a word from our sponsor, Serbi. Did you know that over 60% of cloud applications used by your company don't support identity standards like single sign-on, and that these applications are the leading cause of breaches? Serbi can help. Serbi discovers new applications, eliminates manual security tasks like offboarding, and addresses misconfigurations like disabled 2FA while increasing employee productivity. Wait, a security tool that increases productivity? Yep. Learn more at serby.com. That's C E R B Y.com. Twitter speaks on third party client outage. Twitter finally broke its silence over why third-party apps were no longer working with Twitter's API. A post on the company's Twitter account says Twitter is enforcing its long-standing API rules that may result in some apps not working. This explains why many third-party Twitter clients started having widespread problems accessing the service late Thursday. What wasn't specified is what long-standing rules these apps violated to warrant being cut off. Some have speculated that since these apps don't show display ads, Twitter cut them off as a way to further drive ad revenue. It's worth noting that some apps like Albatross and the iOS version of Phoenix continue to work. Global IT spending fell in 2022. A new analysis by Gartner estimates that global IT spending fell 0.2% on the year in 2022 to $4.38 trillion after initially forecasting a 0.8% increase. It also cut its growth projections for IT spending in 2023 by over half to just 2.4%. Of this estimate, Gartner projects the biggest decline in IT device spending, down 5.1% to $685 billion, while services look to grow 6.7% to $264 billion. With potentially smaller budgets, many organizations report looking to focus on IT investments around optimizing business value, IT modernization, and hiring. 
Latest MailChimp attacks sound familiar. The newsletter giant disclosed a cyber attack exposed data on dozens of customers on January 11th. The attacker accessed an internal tool used by its customer support team through a targeted social engineering campaign. This marks the second breach in the last six months for the company. More troublingly, the details from the August breach sound almost identical, with a social engineering campaign obtaining credentials to access internal tools used by its customer support team. Impacted customers say the attack exposed customer names, web URLs used by stores, and email addresses. The breach did not expose customer passwords. A look at law enforcement's access to money transfer databases. The Wall Street Journal profiled how hundreds of U.S. law enforcement agencies across state, local, and federal jurisdictions maintain access to a database from the Transaction Record Analysis Center. This database shows the flow of funds through money transfer services like Western Union, MoneyGram, Dolex, and Euronet. The Arizona State Attorney General's office initially set up the database back in 2014 as part of a settlement with Western Union to combat drug trafficking. Data obtained by the ACLU shows that any authorized law enforcement agency can query the database without a warrant, including bulk transaction records based on nebulous criteria like Middle Eastern slash Arabic name categories. U.S. Senator Ron Wyden opened an investigation into the use of this database by federal agencies. When the asset discovery market launched, every single company that offered a solution used the line, you can't protect what you don't know. Everyone agreed with that. This week's episode of Defense In Depth looks into if that marketing slogan is actually true. Look for their latest episode titled Securing Unmanaged Assets in your podcast app of choice, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 